that he should lie, neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and he not make it good? Titus 1-2 says that God who cannot lie. Listen, if, you're, if, if that's your God, you got something to crow about. Your friends at work need to hear about your Jesus. They need to hear about how you got saved. Because they've never had that experience. They don't know what it means to have Jesus in your heart. See? And they need to hear that. And then usually the Holy Spirit will prick them and start bothering them about it and help them realize you got something they ain't got and they want what you got. And the only way to get it is the way the Bible says, believe in Jesus. Trust Him as your Savior. So hallelujah, like Paul said here. The Lord's called you to His truth, and it is the truth, and He can't lie, so He didn't want you to believe lies, so trust Him, believe Him. But here's what happens. See, you, can, you say, well, I'm just going to go ahead and just let a little bit. I can keep it under control. No, you can't. Now, there's an apple. See that little bit of a rod in it? Okay, you just set it aside, and in no time it looks like that. Can you see the difference? That's the same apple. Now just imagine if you took that apple and you put it in a whole bushel of good apples. Pretty soon that thing spreads and all of them turn bad. <laughs> That's the way it is. And so the Bible says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. Now this is why the Bible issue is a very important issue. I was explaining, it's so cute because Sarah, or uh, Sarah, Sandra came in here today and when was it you got saved, Sandra? Oh, in October, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she just got saved in October. So she's been reading her Bible. So how far did you get so far? I am um, Isaiah. Okay, good. Wow. She's doing good, ain't she? Yeah. She's in the book of Isaiah. And so she's reading her Bible and learning and growing. And, you know, because she's reading it, how God wrote it <laughs> from beginning to end there, how he wants it to be read. So she's learning a lot. Well, she came to me because uh, Tanya's disciple in her. She wanted to know that difference between Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. And see, we can totally be honest about how we got our Bible. And, and we all know that the, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. Really Greek and Aramaic, but Aramaic is nothing but a Hebrew, uh, but a Greek style of uh, Hebrew. And... Uh, so, it came out of Babylon mostly. And um, what a joy to explain to her. See, in our New Testament, 90 times, that's a lot. 90 times in the Greek, it says Holy Ghost. Only four times in the whole New Testament, in the Greek, does it say Holy Spirit. See, we can talk about the Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit. And of course, He's the third person of the Godhead. And He is holy. And He's a spirit. But when God does something in a meeting, and the book of Acts bears this out, and Jesus bore it out in Luke when He talked about the power from on high. We come down and you boys will be endued with power from on high. I want you to tear it in Jerusalem. And all that. He was talking about Holy Ghost, see. See, we can all come in here and sense a spirit. We're singing songs. We have a... We can have a good spirit in the church today, amen. Mm -hmm. But you come back here about 1 or 2 in the morning and all the lights are out. If you saw something running around in here, you'd take off through the door. Say, man, I saw a ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference? You saw something. Right. To feel something and to see something is two different things. <laughs> amen. 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 And so, so the Bible on purpose, even in the Greek... So if we're going to be honest in giving you a real Bible, we would have to put it in English. But the new versions never do that. Why not? Can't we just be honest? No, we can't, because now we have to translate a dynamic equivalent. We can't have a word-for-word -word translation. Because we're going somewhere with these new translations. We're trying to prepare the world for the coming son of Satan. And so we can all pray our O one who art in heaven. Yes. Yeah. So he's neither male nor female. He's the one. And then when he comes, he's going to be the one, all right. And we're all going to pray to the one. 
So they're going somewhere with this changing the Bible. They're getting the world prepared to accept Satan so he takes over the world. Takes his name, number, and mark in the right hand for you. So we have the best Bible, the most accurate Bible, the King James 1611. Because for some reason, God don't want to improve it. It's been good enough for the millions of people that have gotten into heaven. And I don't think we should change it now just before Jesus comes back. I think it's a little too late. Amen. If it's done God his stamp of approval and bearing good fruit, let's hang with the good fruit. But if you let a little bit of lead, a little leaven in, it's going to damage the whole thing. I told you about the Bible college. Sitting down below the mountain. The water supply was up on top. They had a nice big screen and the big pipe come off the mountain until finally the little four inch pipe came down here to the three inch pipe, you know, and it came on in and supplied the water to the school and one day they, one day they went to get a drink and there was nothing there. They turned on the shower, there was nothing there. The whole Bible college had no water. And they said, well, that's funny. Look up. They went up there and checked it. Well, there's the big, big metal pipe. Screens on it. Nothing's down in there that they could see. But they had to start getting up there and pulling it all out. So they started pulling the pipes out, pulling the pipes out. Pulling. Finally, sure enough, when it reduced down to three inches, there was a big old bullfrog sitting there <laughs> stuck against the pipe. <laughs> no water could get into the Bible college. So they said, well, that's funny. There's a screen on top. How in the world? A little polywog once upon a time. <laughs> said, mm, I think the algae's better down in this dark pipe. Man, I can just sit here and the algae's coming through before it gets us the filters down there at the pumping station. Man, this is a nice place to sit. <laughs> Until finally he cut off the power supply. <clears throat> Same thing with a little leaven. Mama takes that bread. She's making it. She could just make crackers all day if she wanted to. But she adds a little bit of yeast and puts it in that dough. And then whew, she lets it sit there for a while. Maybe puts a damp cloth over it. Next thing you know, wow, it's a big loaf of bread. She can put it in the oven and bake it. And it's just full of little bubbles, you know, because that's what yeast, that's what it's doing. It's making leaven. It's, 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 it's growing. Same thing with sin. It's a picture of sin in the Bible, see. Oh, it's just a little polywog. Oh, I can keep it under control. No, you can't. Right. You let that little bit of sin in that heart. Next thing you know, it gets bigger and bigger and swells up until pretty soon. You can't get no prayers answered from God no more. Something's going on. Yeah. Little leaven leavens the whole lump. Amen. It gets spread throughout. It's sort of like a cancer. Amen. You don't want a little cancer because it can spread and become a lot of cancer. Amen. Watch out. Paul says, hey, God don't want you to have to fool with a little bunch of junk because it'll spread and spread. Next thing you know, it'll just rot you all out. So he says, fourthly, obey the truth because the minister of God conf has confidence in you. A good teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way for others. Paul knew they had a good teacher originally. Who told him about Jesus? Paul did. So Paul says, now look, I taught you people better, and I taught you better than that, and I've got more confidence in you than that. Do not listen to these goofballs coming around here teaching this bunch of junk. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. Obey the truth. The preacher told you the truth because he thought you could handle it. And though it's not easy, the devil's going to attack you. The world's going to attack you. Your own family's going to attack you that don't know Jesus. We've got to love our family, but at the same time, Jesus said, you've got to love me more than family. More. It's okay to love your family. Of course we love our family. Are you nuts? Of course we love them. But I wouldn't love them much if I didn't love Jesus first. Amen. And we love him because he first loved us and gave himself for us. So he says, obey the truth, for false teachers will be judged, didn't he? He that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? 
Paul was preaching Jesus is the only way to heaven. Right. And those dudes that preached, oh, no, 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 you've got to get circumcised. They were persecuting Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul started out that way. He was going out persecuting Christians and killing them. Right. There's something wrong with a religion that tells you, convert to my religion or I'm going to kill you. That's not right. Amen. Paul saying, it, 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 that don't make no sense. See? Amen? Amen? That doesn't make any sense. And yet we have a religion. I, I'm going to pick on Islam. Because if you study their religion, let me ask a question. Do they teach Jesus died on the cross? Oh, no, no, no. They teach. Oh, no. Because we believe Jesus was a true prophet. God would never allow us to profit to hang on a cross. That would be too shameful. So in their way of thinking, they believe somehow God put Judas on the cross yeah. and it was Judas who died on the cross for our sins. Yeah. You say, well, what's your point, preacher? My point is just what Paul said here. Notice what he said. <laughs> Who's the one being persecuted here? It's these Jews persecuting us Christians. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. If I'm teaching you need to trust Jesus and get circumcised, then the Jews wouldn't be out persecuting me in our faith. But the truth is they don't understand Jesus dying on the cross, just like Islam don't understand Jesus dying on the cross. Right. <clears throat> you got to remember Muhammad was raised by a Roman Catholic priest. Right. Hundreds of years after Jesus came, and Muhammad honestly thought as an uneducated man, I'm going to do God a favor and I'm going to start a new religion and combine what I know of Judaism with the Catholic Church and start a new Arabic religion and we'll call it the religion of peace, Islam. And he thought he was going to start a really a new denomination of Christianity. And what fool doesn't know that the Mosque of Omar was built by the Islamic Caliph as a Christian church. They built it to give it to the Christians, but of course the Catholics didn't want nothing to do with it. So it remains a mosque to this day over the rock in Jerusalem. So Paul said, I'm going to preach God's truth. Even as these false teachers and preachers keep persecuting us. But if that's the way I believe, then why do they keep persecuting me? And the truth is, everybody could accept Jesus dying on the cross for them. But no, they get offended at you telling that everybody that Jesus, God's son, died on a cross. They don't understand the cross. And so since they keep talking about how they want to take you into their private room and cut some of your flesh off as a grown man because you didn't have it done when you was a baby. Boy, I wish they were cut off. Now, it's kind of funny here because see, he's using a little sarcasm saying, boy, I wish these people keep talking about cutting somebody that God would just cut them off. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's understandable why you'd say that, Paul. Because <laughs> it's a bunch of junk. You don't have to get cut to go to heaven. There he is. Remember I mentioned Rick Warren? There he is right there. There's some of our TV evangelists, you know, and preachers today. They'll take some Bible truth, but then they mix a bunch of junk. And you got to watch out, boys and girls, because they're pulling you aside from the simplicity that there is in Jesus being your Savior. Amen. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for the Apostle Paul writing this letter to these dear saints in Galatia and to us today that we're here living in Monroe and can be benefited by what he told them and how we're living here to stay true to the faith, not get sidetracked and bogged down with all these folks wanting to add a bunch of junk and twisting the Bible around and not mean what it says and putting out their own version and if we buy pay another hundred dollars we can get their version they just printed so we can really finally have the truth and what a bunch of baloney 
when our great grandmas knew more truth than they knew and they didn't even go to college or have psychology they just read an old King James 1611 and it seemed like they sure turned out right so thank you Lord for that truth help us to believe it now and in Jesus name we ask it amen all right